Okay, so welcome to the final video in this series, which if you watched the first video, I explained that the purpose of this series was to get my Model T on the road. Uh, I've owned the car for almost 12 months now. Uh, I've checked underneath and done collar pin replacements all the way through. I've checked the axle oil level, which is, um, which is correct. Now, I bumped into a guy at the club um, who assured me that you do not fill it up to here, um, fill it up to more like there. Uh, you just need a splash going around. You don't need it to be high enough to run down to the actual axle tubes. So um, this video will be checking the uh, oil seals on both sides here. I want to make sure that um, I've got brakes, at least a decent parking brake. And uh, they will certainly check that when I go to an inspection. So this video will cover that. It will cover taking the wheels off uh, and checking the, the, the brakes and, and the like for oil leaks coming out of the axle tubes. And uh, the final job I'll do, I've checked the clutch uh, free play. Uh, and that checks out, but what I do want to do is take the transmission plate off, the cover plate, because I want to inspect the bands. When I was at the last club meet, I heard a couple of Model Ts taking off, and they did sound quite a lot quieter from the perspective of band noise, so or planetary gear noise, I'm not entirely sure either of those. But So uh, yes, yeah, so I'll set you guys up, and we'll set about trying to get a wheel off, and uh, what I'm expecting here is Taking this, um, oh, good day, Jake. What you doing? Do who are you barking? You don't do your barking, mate. Okay, so we're going to. Oh, it's always tr it's always trouble when the dog's here. He likes to be part of the part of the action. So we'll be taking this off. Um, underneath here will be a cotter pin and a nut. This will be a tapered fit on, so we'll need a puller to come off. But I'm going to just see if I can. Um, see if I can see if I can work it off. Okay, so we're on the right side rear. I'm gonna just inspect this before I jack it up. Yeah. Cot up in a nut. I'm going to jack it up now. What I might just do before I get too much further here, chuck some gloves on and chock a front wheel so it doesn't roll backwards. Yeah, it's quite a, it's a day today, the 19th of September. Uh, Southern Hemisphere, first month of spring. I'm not sure whether you can see them wearing what we call thongs in Australia, single or double pluggers, and I'm in shorts and shirts. It's really, really mild today. It's going to the top of 20 degrees Celsius. All right. It's no weight now, as you'd expect. I'll overkill it here with some big old fencing pliers. Oh man. Oh, jeez. You really gotta feast your eyes on on how this uh cotter pin went in. It's a bloody disgrace. I'm gonna fatigue it and get it out of there. Come on. Oops. 
Okay. Okay. Now this will be a normal right hand thread. Does that come off? Stop a little pig. Oh, how interesting. Okay. I'm going to maybe refer to my manual just to make sure I know what I'm looking at here. So I have the book here. <laughs> I remove the rear axle, which is the process I'm following here to an extent. Remove the hub caps and run off the axle shaft nuts. So I've, I've done that. Lift up the rear end with chain falls and lifting hooks. Withdraw the rear wheel from the axle shaft with a wheel puller. So it should be in the pulling state right now. The puller is screwed onto the hub and drawn tightly by means of a clamp screw. The screw in the end of the puller is then drawn down against the end of the shaft until the wheel is forced off. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. Okay. So the, um, the apparatus seems to be uh, an outer shell that screws on where the cap normally screws on. And in the end of that shell is a, a bolt. So you've got a shell that screws on here. It comes up here. At the end of the, sh the, end of the shell is a, a, a tapped um, hole for a bolt to go in. So you screw that on there, and then you would screw the bolt down, and it'll pull, the, pull that off. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit and uh, bring you back. Okay, so for the update, I don't have a means to get this off without a puller. I'm not going to, um, not even going to attempt to, to do any whaling or bashing on, on the end of that. Um, it's just going to stress the internal differential components. I'll get the right tool, um, but I do have work to kick on with. So I'm going to uh, start by getting into this... Um, Getting to pulling this floor out again. Uh, should be straightforward. I'll get you in there. Looking good. You guys know the drill. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Get these little floor restraints off. Actually, while I've got the floor out, I might uh, run a multimeter on the um, output from the magneto. See how many volts I've got there when it's running. I, t I took the um, took all the coils out because I wanted to get them checked at a club meet recently. And unfortunately. Couldn't get them checked because we had a bit of a disaster. One of the members of the public were there, and um, someone got run over by one of our club members. Uh, literally got parked on. Um, he he kind of made a mistake in in uh, going forwards in first gear instead of backwards. 
at full full speed, I suppose. You, I think you thought he must have been putting the clutch in instead of instead of literally selecting first gear. And it didn't stall, it just lurched forward and the person was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, as a result, yeah, it got run over. Right, here we are. We see our hogshead. Let me take this off. Looks like he's got some sealant around there. Um, first thing, there's, there's enough, a little bit of play in there. And uh, I suppose the purpose for taking this apart, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there was, um, my car makes a fairly sophisticated grinding sound. Um, when you put your foot on the bands and uh, it's not a terrible noise, it just it sounds a lot noisier than others. And when I mentioned that to um, our club section lead, Alan, he, um, he said, I'll take you for a ride in, in mine so that you can see what it's like. And unfortunately, we never got to do that because of the, um, the incident with the, guy, the person getting run over. Um, and he was running Kevlar bands. I was sort of suspicious that maybe I've had a Kevlar change out. And that's just how they sound. Uh, but there's also a wood alternative. So yeah, long story short, I don't know what I've got. I don't know whether I've got bands left, as in the band lining left, but I need to do that. So it's worth peace of mind at least to get an inspection happening here so these were all pretty um what does it say mm -hmm. some sort of lettering on it I'll be able to inspect it better yeah so some peace of mind and uh, it's easy to get access to. It's a maintenance job anyway. I do note we've got these two bolts here which don't have um, either engineer's safety wire or um, cotter pins. Okay, let's see. I don't think there's sealant on here. Just a gasket. There you go. Oh, he's got a screen on here. That's an excellent modification. So you can certainly see, I just went around just to check that you can see, so you certainly can see that um, there is a screen here. Um, foil comes down and it just picks up any Detritus there. There's a little bit of a little crud. It needs a clean, so that will be cleaned. I'll just see if I can get this off without upsetting too much. Come on! Oh, very nice. Lovely, lovely jubbly. So that's um some of the crud there. We'll get off. To inspect this, we need a light. Right, I'll get a light and we'll come in and have a look. Okay, what we're looking at is um, cotton bands. I'll get right in there if you can see them. And um, yeah, they do look, they look quite new. Yeah, quite new indeed. So that's what I wanted to see. 
Um, it's all looking rather spiffing in here. Recently overhauled, if it's anything like uh, the engine, there's just nothing to worry about in there. Yeah, so if you've seen the engine video, there's um, when I took the head off, pistons were new, balls were still cross hatched. So, very nice. So, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you the screen in a bit more detail. There's the screen, very little, um, very little crud that's gone, gone through there or at least been caught there. So I'll, I'll clean that all off and I'll reinstate that now. So I'll just put you down and get that done. Alrighty, I was wondering who's curious to see what a bit of um, oil splash looks like. Make sure the handbrake's on. Gonna start it up, probably the cover off. Play. Let's have a go. <laughs> Oh, I didn't turn the didn't turn the ignition on, guys. Let's go. Started cold. I haven't started any choke. Okay, starter motor's now done its intermittent failure thing. Just good to know. Anyway, I think we saw enough of that. It fairly chucks it out, which is quite interesting. All right, one parts washer meets trans filter. So let's do a bit of this first. Then I'm, I've got a toothbrush there, yeah, I'll get into that with. I'm just not going to do it one handed, so I'll put you guys down. Alright, so there you go. It's just like I bought one. I'm going to um, carefully take these gaskets apart uh, and then just give them a little bit of that liquid gasket sealant that I use. And uh, that will ensure I'm not going to leak from there. Let it leak from somewhere else, I say. I'll take you through reassembly of this thing now. Now, please don't use this much RTV. Uh, credit where it's due though, it wasn't leaking, but seriously, that took a good half hour of scraping off gaskets so that I can reuse the gaskets. Whereas if you, um, if you do use the right stuff, this is me saying it's the right stuff, aviation former gasket, liquid sealant, Paint it on. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong. So I'll set you up here in the car again. All right, so um, hopefully we'll get a good view there. I'm going to give you a little bit of zoom. There you go, looks good. Now I'm just going to first, first step here. I'm going to get a bit of brake clean. Um, I've already made sure this first mating surface is clean, but um, I go for squeaky clean on these things. And not gonna spray brake clean into transmission. Just gonna go onto the cloth. And I can um, bring it around like that. It's actually a really good clean surface here. A little bit cast iron. Yeah, the, uh, I'll do some painting by numbers. And again, you don't need half a bottle. You just need to bring that round. Oh, don't drop it into the container there. Containers are good under your car. In case you drop them, you don't have to crawl under. But that does remind me not to drop the brush into the transmission. That would be something I would do actually. All right, so um, and just after a fine layer here. Yeah, I've used this 
extensively in my amateur mechanical career and it's never let me down beauty is you can um you can go back in six months 12 months two years and the gaskets will come come clean uh, come free so um all right so that will go there now um i'm not going to paint the gasket i'm going to paint the underside of the filter just making sure those holes are all exposed yeah hopefully you saw by uh, virtue of that demo of the uh, oil splash how um how vigorous the uh, oiling system is it's pretty decent it slings it around and that craziness yes i prefer to paint the um the solid components rather than the gaskets themselves it just seems to make more sense um you you don't have gaskets sliding around you just hold this component and give it what it needs yeah incidentally i um i did uh clean the mating surfaces of this as well so it's uh, all good to go and part two and that gets fitted like that again checking that the holes are lined up which they are some gasket and here love the smell of this stuff too Smells like um, a bit like nutmeg mixed with um, mixed with vinyl glue mixed with petrol. What are the food products does it smell like? Mm. Definitely nutmeg. Reminds me of Christmas, a bit of eggnog. Okay, so that's looking good. Next is another gasket. Oh. Okay, one more gasket there. You can see the uh, seal, the gasket paint on solvent gasket kind of um, holds it in place as well add a bonus last but not least my HW Clark cover plate What's this one here Went a little off the beaten track there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. It's going to go on here. Okay, I've got my first first screw at the ready. to try and line up there you go it's got them lined up in there do opposing screws look at my wife's hair all over me let's not go into that okay two screws in guaranteed success at this point Notice I'm not screwing them down until they're all in. 
because there's a fair bit of movement required in this plate. And then of course the uh, the last couple, the easiest, the alignment. Right, and I've just noticed in here that my little uh, exercise in running the engine without that cover on has resulted in a bit of, a bit of backlash, but anyhow. Um, get a tall driver for this one. And I'll just nip it very gently down first pass. Should probably start in the middle and work outwards. If it was anything of um, consequence. Rocker cover or something like that. I can see some of the um, that liquid gasket being pushed out. It's a good sign. A great, great peace of mind. Having that filter screen in there. All right, so now I'm just going to give it the final torque, and, uh, and that will then be it. If there's a piece of furniture you'd want the slots in the heads of these screws to all line up neatly. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do here is just get a bit of that uh, brake clean again. Give it a final uh, going over. reason I like to do that is that um, if you get an oil leak or um, is it supposed to be loose like that I don't think so we've just done um, that would be a locking nut I'd say I'm gonna give that a bit of a tweak yeah so if I get a, an oil leak in the future uh, it's easier to trace it back Uh, up here was where I wanted to Let's see if I can bring you in. I wanted to take a voltmeter reading off the magneto here, but also while I'm in here, it's just reminded me to um, to retorque that head down. It's probably run 15 minutes now, and uh, it's probably worthwhile doing. All right, well that's um that's that job finished. I'm going to make sure that's a lock nut and uh, and then leave it at that. Okay, so here's a interesting short development. So um, I uh, I was checking brakes. So we've got the brakes. I think the brakes are uh, off at the moment. So I'll put the brakes on. Okay, pads have fallen off, but that's no drama. So I um, put the brakes on, and the, with this wheel on, off the ground, notice that this one's just bloody solid as, it's not moving. That'll pass the test, and there's no moisture. 
So then I thought I'd try to get this wheel off. It came off relatively easily. And looking at this, uh, this part of the, the drum, there's a little bit of contamination there. Not terribly bad. I'll clean that off. Coming in here, you know, there's not, in my opinion, not a lot of leakage happening here. It's just, um, just fairly occasional. So I'm going to clean this back up. Once we put it all back together again, that's where it slipped off the cam. Um, give it a bit of a clean up and, uh, and see if I can't just adjust it and leave it at that for the time being. Yeah, it's not long-term. I'm not going to say it's been long-term contamination there. It's actually pretty decent. I'm going to take them off. It's a bit of wear. some point I'll, uh, I'll address that. I'll take the key out. Get any grease out from behind that. You want that that wheel to push back on the taper as far as it can. So, Let's get so. it put back together. One last thing. I'll give the um, I'll give this a bit of a spray as well. Get some fresh, um, some fresh cloth for that. I'll leave you guys looking at a bit of British engineering. Okay. Let's get in here. I'd like to meet the inventor of brake, uh, brake clean. Like I said, not terrible. You know, with one square, you know, clo one single cloth. She's clean and decontaminated. Okay. Um, come back to my makeshift bench here. Now you're never going to 100% decontaminate them, but they're mainly metallic, mainly brass, sort of brass material. Those rivets have been taking a bit of a pounding. Um, you know, that's one. I'm going to probably leave it at that. One 
last um, treatment. On a clean part of the cloth. What I'm not going to do is um, soak these. That's asking for trouble. Right, number two, clean cloth. And this shoe looks uh, a little less worn. Wish I had taken stock of um, which one was the leading shoe, which was a trailing. Oh, actually, they're um, top and bottom. So this one, because it didn't have contamination in here, this must have been the top. So I'm going to make the other one the top and this one the bottom. So this one's actually pretty decent. There's no crap on it. So I've, um, give it one last go. Minor contamination. Okay, clean these springs up. There we are, just like a bought one. Going back over. Okay, righty. Do let's see if we can if we can get this uh, get this back in. Can't see that moving at all. rubber it's not an original seal rubber or neoprene glad I left it okay right so I'm gonna release release the handbrake to, uh, put us back to a neutral position I said I'm going to put the the top on the bottom. Ooh, I can't I can't do that. I'm sorry. Only go one way because what you got here is a, a wedge. That's the adjustment there. So when they're on, and you want to adjust, you'll tighten that, and this will stay put. Oh, can't do it with one hand. This stays put and it gets drawn in and it wedges the shoes apart. You can see how that would work. Now, um, obviously, the idea was to rotate that around and that's just not going to work. So, so that's going to go there. Two springs. I'm going to need two hands. Let's see if I can't put you down. I can give you a better view. Let's have a look at that. Is there anything? Oh, look at that. You can almost see what's going on. Okay, so I think the best way here is to Connect our springs first to each shoe. Not before. I'm loving this plate. If that just isn't the most non-concentric wash you've ever seen. So these are Probably some of the most basic breaks that you'll ever see. Okay, so there's nothing holding them onto the 
the backing plate. The only thing sort of holding them is behind here, the adjuster, like so. Um, how strange, I need to see what, it, what is going on here. I would have expected the adjuster to be um, in contact with the shoes when they're on. There's a lot of adjustment to be taken up there. Um, I won't touch the adjuster until I've got the hub back on. So that's, again, that's asking for trouble. I won't be able to get the, the uh, drum all the way on if I meddle too much with that. Unlike, I suppose, modern cars, there is a, a cotter key that, uh, that the wheel hub has to marry up to on the shaft. So this key is in here. And remember we made sure that was well seated in there. No grease. All right, so I just need to see so looking over the wheel like that. I can, I can certainly I can certainly see the key lining up. So now this is a bit nasty here the thread on the end of that axle. It's really nasty. So um, I'm going to take some extra care there. You don't need to see me winding a, winding a nut, nut on there. I'll go and do that now. Okay. So everything's back together again. I've just got it running. It's just slow down a little bit. All right, next time you see me, I'll be rolling. Just put the hood back on, clean the brass up. It's uh, really happy with the way it's running. It's beautiful, I'll just hang crank that to start it. Maybe you want some proof. Okay, I'll give you some proof. timing there. I'm not going to kill myself. Okay, there we go. Three, two, one. Lovely. So, um, put back on. I have to check the brakes now. They're all set. What I have discovered under here, unfortunately, missing one other body nut so yeah I say the job's finished but it's almost there anyway thank you for watching I'll, uh, I'll shut it down now and um, hopefully next time you see me I'll be rolling <laughs>